Good morning, ninth grade. It's time to finish the play. Oh, I'm really excited. Um, so I'm kind of looking a mess right now. I went to the store and my hair's a little frizzy because it was raining outside. But um, I'm just really excited to finish the play. We're gonna go over act five, scene three. It is very long, so this video might be a little lengthy, but I feel like if I don't explain everything, you might miss out on some stuff to use for your essay because it's the end where the tragedy takes place, which is like kind of the whole point. So I wanna make sure I go over it thoroughly enough. Um, if you guys have any questions, you can make a comment on the video if you have a question about anything I say, or you can always text me via remind if you want. Um, doesn't matter. You can kind of do whatever you want. So we'll start on Act 5, Scene 3. I'm just looking at all the comments that I wrote when I read this the first time. I remember I was like, um, really? So Act 5, Scene 3. Um, it starts out with Paris and his page. So let's go ahead and read our description here. So if you look for 5.3, this right here is on page 218 on the left. It says Paris visits Juliet's tomb, so that's why he is there. It says when Romeo arrives, challenges him. So that's all I'm going to do, spoilers, but that's kind of where we are right now. So as you know from um, the previous two scenes and then what happened in Act 4, we've got Juliet is asleep in the tomb. She was supposed to be asleep for 42 hours. Um, there are only about three hours left until she wakes up, and when Friar Lawrence realized that he messed up and that Friar John did not deliver the letter, he's like, mm, better go rescue her so she's not like lying awake with all of her dead relatives. So he's going to the tomb. So this is the first person going to the tomb, is Friar Lawrence. The second person at the tomb is Paris. God bless him. He barely knew her, but he's he's going to visit her tomb anyways. She died, so Paris is there. Third person is that Romeo bought that poison and is also on his way to the tomb. So all these characters are eventually going to meet up. So we've got a lot of people going to the tomb. So that's our setting right now. Um, and so you guys know like what this means. We don't really do this anymore, but it's common in a lot of cultures. But the tomb that they have is like, um, typically there's a covering, but mostly it's just like a really big like hole in the ground and there's like a fancy like coffin type thing and there's usually like a big heavy like cement slab and you lift that off and then you kind of just put the bodies inside the hole so it's like your family tomb and like your whole family goes inside so that's why Friar Lawrence said he needed a crowbar because he has to pry it open so that he can get Juliet out because she's on the top right now wouldn't it be weird if someone else died and was laying on top of her oh. but um that's kind of where we are so there's kind of like a building but mostly it's just like a hole in the ground and then there's a slab and then he just has to use the crowbar to take the, the, the big cement slab off. So we've got Paris. Um, we'll start with him. He says, give me thy torch, boy, to his servant. Hence and stand aloof, yet put it out, for I would not be seen under yon yew trees lay thee all along, holding thy ear close to the hollow ground. So shall no foot upon the churchyard tread, being loose, unfirm, with digging up of graves, but shalt hear it. Whistle then to me a signal that thou hearest something approach. Give me those flowers, do as I bid thee go. So, um, Paris has instructed his servant, he's like, hey, if you could just wait over there and just like let me know if anybody's coming. I just, I want to be alone. I really don't want to see anybody. If you could just wait over here, give me some alone time. Then if anyone's coming, if you could tell me, that'd be great. Um, the page says aside, so no one can hear this. He says, I am almost afraid to stand alone here in the churchyard, yet I will adventure. So he's scared. So he's like, I don't want to be by myself. Um, he moves away from Paris. So now we've kind of got Paris by himself. Um, but the page is like keeping watch on the side. Paris is scattering flowers around her tomb. He says, sweet flower with flowers, thy bridal bed I strewn. Oh, whoa, thy canopy is dust and stones, which with sweet water nightly I will do, or wanting that with tears distilled by moans. The obsequies that I for thee will keep nightly shall be to strew thy grave and weep. So he's really sad. I mean, he's not a bad guy. So he's really upset that, you know, she's died um, and he is mourning. You know, he's got... Um, his flowers that he's kind of strooning around and he's you know kind of telling her like yeah i'm crying i'm really upset um so then the page whistles which means that someone is near um which is it's actually a good idea he had the paris keep he had that paris had his page keep watch um because we already know that there are other people that are going to be approaching the tomb as well so it says the boy gives warning something doth approach what cursed foot wanders this way tonight to crop to cross my obsequies and true love's right 
what with a torch muffle me night a while so he uh, steps aside and this is important so the page is aside and then paris is aside so they're both on stage but no one else can see them this is important so paris says that he will let night shroud him and that he's gonna hide until these people like leave so that he can continue with what he was doing and of course who enters uh but romeo and balthazar which i told you we knew it was gonna happen so romeo and balthazar enter so paris has hidden himself and his page is hidden as well um romeo is uh cuckoo bananas so he's completely lost his mind so if you read what he's saying here as soon as he enters he says give me that mattock in the wrenching iron so he also has like a crowbar so that he can open the tomb hold take this letter early in the morning see thou deliver it to my lord and father Give me the light. Upon thy life I charge thee, where'er thou hearest or seest, stand all aloof and do not interrupt me in my course. So he is kind of doing the opposite with Balthazar, kind of like his servant, but it's his friend. He says, listen, Balthazar, no matter what you hear, do not come over. He's like, no matter what you think you see, no matter what you think you hear, he says, do not interrupt me in my course. He's like, leave me alone. Because you know what Romeo's gonna do. You know, he's got the poison. He wants to kill himself and be with Juliet. So obviously he's like, Balthazar, leave me alone. Do not come over here. So he's saying something a little different. He continues, Why I descend into this bed of death is partly to behold my lady's face, but chiefly to take hence from her dead finger a precious ring, a ring that I must use in dear employment. Therefore hence begone, but if thou jealous doth return to pry in what I further shall intend to do, by heaven I will tear thee... So he says, Balthazar, listen, if you interrupt me, he says, I will tear thee joint by joint and strew this hungry churchyard with thy limbs. Okay. So he says, listen, Balthazar, if you interrupt me, I'm going to rip you limb by limb and I'm going to strew your body parts all across this churchyard. And then he does respond and he says, um, the time and my intents are savage wild, more fierce and more exonerable far than empty tigers of the roaring sea. So remember how I said like Romeo will become, you know, crazier and crazier. So he's kind of acknowledging that he's like losing it a little bit. And he's like, I'm crazy, man. Like, I'm just letting you know, if you interrupt me, you will be sorry. So Balthazar is like, okay. Balthazar says, I will be gone, sir, and not trouble you. Balthazar hides himself as well, though. He doesn't completely leave. So Romeo says, so shalt thou show me friendship. Take thou that, giving money. I don't think you have to pay your friends money to be friends, but I don't know. Romeo's kind of off his rocker. So Balthazar says aside, he says, for all this same, I'll hide me here about. He, his looks I fear and his intents I doubt. So he's saying like, I don't know what he's going to do and I'm a little worried. So instead of leaving, he just steps aside. So we have a third person hiding in the dark. We have Paris, Paris's servant, and then Balthazar is now hiding in the darkness. He doesn't really trust Romeo and he shouldn't. So he's hiding in the dark, kind of waiting to see what happens. Romeo, beginning to force open the tomb. It's kind of heavy. So Romeo says, Thou detestable ma, thou womb of hell. Did you go outside? You're cold. You feel cold. You're chilling. Did you go outside? Did he do anything? Good. He peed. Good boy. So Romeo's beginning to open the tomb. He says, thou detestable ma, thou womb of death. If you guys remember, Friar Lawrence was talking about how the earth is both a tomb and a womb. So this is kind of when all of that is coming to fruition, when Romeo kind of opens the tomb into the earth. Calls it a womb of death. He says, gorge with the dearest morsel of the earth. Thus I enforce the rotten jaws to open and in despite I'll cram thee with more food. Okay, so he compares the tomb to a mouth. And then in class, this is when I would ask you, what's more food for the tomb? And then you would say, Romeo, because he's going to kill himself and throw himself in the tomb. Um, anyway, so Romeo's starting to force open the tomb. Now, remember, Paris is um, still on stage. He's just hidden. So Paris interjects at this point. He says, this is that banished haughty Montague that murdered my love's cousin, with which grief it is supposed the fair creature died. And here has come to do some villainous shame to the dead bodies. I will apprehend him. So Paris is like, uh-uh, that Romeo is about to do some type of nonsense because he's opening their tomb and he already killed Tybalt. And he, uh, Paris blames him as well for Juliet's death because he thinks Juliet kind of died of, of mourning. So um, Paris is like, mm-mm. So Paris is stepping forward. So Paris comes out from the darkness. And he says, stop thy unhallowed toil, vile Montague. Can vengeance be pursued further than death? Commit, um, condemned villain, I do apprehend thee. Obey and go with me, for thou must die. So Paris is like, hey, it's the law that you are not supposed to be here. I need to go to the police because your punishment is death. Thank you. Romeo obviously is like, no. So he says, I must indeed, and therefore came I hither. 
good gentle youth tempt not a desperate man so again like this is where romeo is saying like i'm crazy like don't do anything you'll regret because i am completely unhinged i've gotten he literally has nothing to lose so romeo is like don't tempt a desperate man i there are no consequences for me that are worse than what's already happening he says fly hence and leave me think upon these gone let them affright thee i beseech thee youth Put not another sin upon my head by urging me to fury. So this is in class where I would ask you, what is the other sin that can be put on Romeo's head? The sin would be killing Paris. So he says, don't make me kill someone else. Okay. He says, oh, be gone. By heaven, I love thee better than myself, for I come hither armed against myself. Stay not, be gone, live, and hereafter say a madman's mercy bid thee run away. So Romeo is again calling himself a madman, so we can kind of see that he is spiraling into insanity. So he tells um, Paris, Paris, like, hey, I'm being nice. You really, you really need to leave. Like, you need to go. Paris, of course, says, I do defy thy commination and apprehend thee for a felon here. So Paris is like, no. Um, Romeo says, wilt thou provoke me? Then have at thee, boy. They draw and fight. This is on 225. So they fight. Um, this is when Paris's page is like, oh, wow, I need to call the police. So the page says, oh, Lord, they fight. I will go call the watch, which is just the police. So the page exits because he's realizing that. He's like, oh, I should probably take care of this. Um, and then Paris, of course, Paris says, oh, I am slain. Okay. So Paris is dying. He said, if thou be merciful, open the tomb, lay me with Juliet. He dies. So Paris is dead. So we can add that to our death count. So Paris has died. Um, Romeo slayed him. Um, he says that he wants his body to be laid with Juliet. And obviously Romeo's like, no. Nah. So Romeo says, in faith I will. Let me pursue peruse this face. Mercutio's kinsman, noble county Paris. Interesting. I didn't realize they were kinsmen until just now. What said my man when my batossed soul did not attend him as we rode? I think he told me Paris should have married Juliet. Said he not so, or did I dream it so? Or am I mad hearing him talk of Juliet to think it was so? Oh, give me thy hand, one writ with me in sour misfortune's book. I'll bury thee in a triumphant grave. He opens the tomb. So he is going to throw Paris's body in the tomb with the rest of the Capulets. Oh, grave? Oh, no. A lantern, slaughtered youth. For here lies Juliet, and her beauty makes this vault a feasting presence of light. Death, lie thou there. Be a dead man interred. Laying Paris in the tomb. So, yes, Romeo does what Paris says, and he does lay him in the tomb with the rest of the Capulets. It says, How oft, when men are at the point of death, have they been merry, which their keepers call a lightning before death? Oh, how may I call this a lightning? Oh, my love, my wife, death that have sucked the honey of thy breath, had no power yet upon thy beauty. So basically what's happening is that Romeo has opened the tomb um, and he has placed Paris's body inside and he is finally looking at Juliet who is laying in the tomb still with the appearance of death. I don't know how much time it is until she wakes up, but... Um, so he's basically looking at her. He says that death hath sucked the honey of thy breath, but it has had no power yet upon thy beauty. So he's commenting that she doesn't look super dead. So he says, this is the really long on two twenty seven. So he says, thou art not conquered. Beauty's ensign yet is crimson in thy lips and in thy cheeks and death's pale flag is not advanced there. So he's like, you look alive. He's like, you don't look super dead because she still has like redness in her face and obviously the reason that she doesn't look super dead is because she, she's about to wake up but obviously he doesn't know that so he's like you don't look super dead um and then he says tybalt liest thou there in thy bloody sheet oh what more favor can i do to thee than with that hand that cut thy youth in twain to sunder this that was thine enemy forgive me cousin so romeo basically asks forgiveness from tybalt's corpse um ah dear juliet why art thou yet so fair shall i believe that unsubstantial death is amorous and that the lean abhorred monsters keeps these here in the dark to be his prayer more for fear of that, I still will stay with thee and never from this palace of dim night depart again. So Romeo's basically like, hey, Juliet, I'm going to kill myself and hang out here with you forever. So he's kind of just saying what the plan is. He says, here, here will I remain with worms that are thy chambermaids. Oh, here will I set up my everlasting rest and shake the yoke of inauspicious stars from this world-wearied flesh. Eyes, look your last. Arms, take your last embrace. O oh, lips, O oh, the doors of breath, seal with a righteous kiss a dateless bargain to engrossing death. 
so really good lines there at the end but you know he's saying like look at the stars one last time you know like hold her for one last time kiss her for one last time so kissing Juliet totally normal he thinks she's dead so it's a little weird but um it says come bitter conduct come unsavory guide thou desperate pilot now at once run on the dashing rocks thy seaside wary bark here's to my love so he's drinking so he drinks his poison it says right here drinking um oh true apothecary thy drugs are quick thus with the kiss I die he dies by Romeo. So Romeo dies at the bottom of page 227. So he takes his poison after he's kissed Juliet and looked at the stars or whatever. So drinks his poison and dies. Um, I wrote on the bottom, everyone is dead. Um, and then the last person to enter the tomb, like I said, we have one more. We've got Friar Lawrence, who's coming with a spade with a shovel and a crowbar. So we have enter Friar Lawrence with lantern, crow, and spade. So he's got all of his tools because he needs to like bust her out and then hide Juliet in his cell because she's totes gonna wake up and he didn't think that Romeo would ever figure it out so he was like well I better get her out of that place with all those dead people so at the top of 229 a friar Lawrence says St. Francis by my speed how oft tonight have my old feet stumbled at graves who's there and of course the only person left is good old Balthazar he's still hiding in the dark and friar Lawrence is like oh god he scared me so there's Balthazar and Balthazar says here's one a friend and one that knows you well friar Lawrence says bliss be upon you tell me good my friend what torch is yon that vainly lends his light to grubs and eyeless skulls as i discern it burneth in the capel's monument so he's like who's over there he's like whose lantern is that balthazar says it doth so holy sir and there's my master one that you love so friar lawrence who is it and balthazar says romeo and friar lawrence is like how long hath he been there and balthazar says he's been there for half an hour um, Friar Lawrence says, go with me to the vault. And Balthazar says, um, no, because Romeo said if he saw me, he would literally cut me from limb from limb and strew my limbs across the churchyard. So I'm not going to do that. Balthazar says, I dare not, sir. My master knows not, but I am gone hence and fearfully did menace me with death if I did look upon his intent. So Balthazar's like, no. Friar Lawrence says, stay then. I'll go alone. Fear comes upon me. You should be a little afraid. I mean, you put a girl inside of a tomb with all of her dead relatives. I think you should be a little bit afraid of that. Um, Balthazar says, this is so funny, it's so stupid, but he says he had a dream. Uh, Balthazar says, as I did sleep under this yew tree here, I dreamt my master and another fought and that my master slew him. Obviously, it wasn't a dream, it really happened, but as you can see, we still have that reoccurring trope of dreams. Balthazar believes that he dreamt that Romeo um, slain someone, but he really actually did. So this is kind of another thing where we have dreams that do become reality, like there is some type of foreshadowing, even though this one's kind of tongue-in-cheek because it did actually happen, but still the same concept. Um, so Friar Lawrence moving towards the tomb. Romeo, alack, alack, what blood is this which stains the stony entrance of the sepulchre? What means these masterless and gory swords to lie discolored by this place of peace? Romeo, oh pale, what else? What Paris too and steeped in blood? So he's, he's finding Paris's dead body. That's why there's blood there because Romeo stabbed him. So he's finding his dead body. Um, and then he says, at the top of 231, the lady stirs. So Juliet is waking up. Juliet, here she is. She says, oh, comfortable friar, where is my lord? I do remember well where I should be, and there I am. Where is Romeo? I have some bad news for you, Juliet. Friar Lawrence says, I hear some noise. Lady, come from that nest of death, contagion, and unnatural sleep. So he's like, get out of that tomb. It says, a greater power than we can contradict hath thwarted our intent. So Friar Lawrence is like, something went super wrong. He's like, something bad happened. He says, come, come away. Thy husband in thy bosom there lies dead in Paris too. Come, I'll dispose of thee among a sisterhood of holy nuns. So, okay, option like five is that Juliet is now going to be a nameless nun is um, Friar Lawrence's plan. So he's like, that's uh, pretty much all I can do. So Friar Lawrence is like, we need to go. Like, we need to leave. Like, look at what has happened. Like, this is a mess. He's like, we need to go. And of course, Juliet doesn't want to. She says, go get thee hence for I will not away. So she's like, I will not leave. Like, Romeo's here, I'm here. So Friar Lawrence exits. And Juliet says, this is where she kind of realizes what happened. Juliet says, what's here? A cup closed in my true love's hand? Poison, I see, hath been his timeless end. So she's starting to kind of put together like what's going on, that it was a poison that has killed Romeo. Oh, churl, drunk all and left no friendly drop to help me after. So she's like, why didn't you leave some poison for me so that I could also die with you? She says, I will kiss thy lips. Happily, some poison yet doth hang on them to make me die with a restorative. She kisses him. 
thy lips are warm. So she realizes that he, like, literally just died, like, two seconds ago. Literally, guys, they missed each other by, like, a minute. A minute. Romeo kills himself and Juliet wakes up like, hey, so so close but julia kisses him to try to get some poison off of his lips supposedly um and then enter paris's page in the watch so remember paris's page went to get the police because he was like oh they fight in like i need to go get the cops so um paris's page comes back with the police and the first watch is like where do we go and juliet realizes there's noise then i'll be brief oh happy dagger this is thy sheath there rust and let me die she takes Romeo's dagger, stabs herself, and dies. <laughs> so before the cops show up, she's like, someone's coming. And then she just kills herself on top of Romeo's body um, in the tomb. So the top of 233, so everybody's dead. So the top of 233, the page is saying, you know, this is the place. Um, the watch is realizing that there's like a lot of blood around. And he's like, oh my God. And then he looks into the tomb and he says, pitiful sight. Here lies the county slain and Juliet bleeding warm and newly dead. So he realizes that like something's going on because she looks totally alive, but she's dead again. So he's like, well, what is happening? Um, and it says, who here hath lain this two days buried? So he's a little confused about Juliet. He says, go tell the prince, run to the Capulets and run to the Montague. So he's like, bring everybody here. Like something, you know, has gone down. And then it says, enter watchman with Romeo's man, Balthazar. So Balthazar is coming back to kind of tell them what's happened. The second watchman says, here's Romeo's man. We found him in the churchyard. Hold him in safety till the prince come hither. So they're taking Balthazar into custody because they're like, you know, tell us what happened. Um, the third watch is um he finds the friar he says here's a friar that trembles sighs and weeps we took this mattock and this spade from him so friar lawrence looks super sus because he's like freaking out and he has like a weapon like he has a shovel so they're like here's this friar being super weird and he has a shovel and a crowbar so obviously friar lawrence is super sus and they're like mm, what are you doing here old man um and then the first watch says a great suspicion stay the friar too so he's like that's a little weird um so enter prince with attendance so the prince comes back and he kind of is going to realize that something has happened um and i do like the prince's speech um he does have a couple important things to say so the prince says so funny at the bottom of 233 the prince says well, what misadventure is so early up that our person calls from our morning rest so the prince is like why am i awake right now <laughs> he's like why am i awake enter capulet and lady capulet so they both enter um, and they're kind of saying like, uh, it says people on the street cry Romeo, some Juliet, some Paris, and they're all like, what is going on? And then the first watch says, here lies the county Paris slain and Romeo's dead. And he says, Juliet dead before, but warm and new killed. So he's like, this looks weird. Like she looks alive, but she was kind of like stabbed again. So he talks about that. Um, and then they basically are just describing everything. And then Montague enters as well. The death is not yet over so lord montague enters and the prince says come montague for thou art early up to see thy son and heir now early down so the prince says you're up early to see your son die early um poor montague he says alas my liege my wife is dead tonight so romeo's mom died poor montague he says grief of my son's exile has stopped her breath so it looks like she kind of died of grief you know she died of sadness um if i believe that i don't know but he says that she basically died from grief because romeo had been exiled so poor montague everybody's dead his son and his wife are both dead which is really unfortunate um the prince says look and thou shalt see so seeing romeo dead he says oh thou untaught what manners is in this to press before thy father to a grave so he's like dang like it really sucks if your kid like dies before you <laughs> like he's like that is terrible that romeo has gone to his grave like you know before i have um and then the prince says seal up the mouth of outrage for a while till we can clear these ambiguities and know their spring their head their true descent and then will i be general of your woes and lead you even to death meantime forbear and let mischance be slave to patience bring forth parties of suspicion so the prince is like i know you want to grieve but i need to figure out what's going on so he's like i need to figure that out first so all the uh, parties of suspicion we've got friar lawrence we've got balthazar so they both are kind of they were there so the guys are like what's going on friar lawrence is first he says i am the greatest able to do least yet most suspected as the time and place doth make against me of this direful murder so far lawrence is like listen this is not my fault i know it looks like i killed them but i totally didn't but 
didn't you though? <laughs> I feel like Friar Lawrence should be a little bit guilty. But he says, and here I stand both to impeach and purge myself condemned and myself excused. So Friar Lawrence is about to spill all of his beans. So the prince says, then say at once what thou dost know in this. So I'm going to read um, all of Friar Lawrence's speech. Um, I'm not going to explain all of it. I feel like it's pretty obvious, but I'm just going to read it all. I will be brief. First of all, no, you're not because it's two pages long. It says, I will be brief for my short date of breath is not so long as it is a tedious tale. Romeo, their dead, was husband to that Juliet, and she, their dead, that Romeo's faithful wife. I married them, and their stolen marriage day was Tybalt's doomsday, whose untimely death banished the new-made bridegroom from the city. For whom, and not for Tybalt, Juliet pined. You, to remove that siege of grief from her, betrothed and would have married her per perforce to County Paris. Then comes she to me, and with wild looks bids me devise some mean to rid her from this second marriage, or in my cell there she would kill herself. That gave I her, so tutored by my art, a sleeping potion, which so took effect as I intended, for it wrought on her the form of death. Meantime, I writ to Romeo that he should hither come as this dire night to help her take from her borrowed grave, being the time the potion's force should cease. But he which bore my letter, Friar John, was stayed by accident, and yesternight returned my letter back. Then all alone at the prefixed hour of her waking came I to take her from her kindred's vault, meaning to keep her closely at my cell till I conveniently could send to Romeo. But when I came, some minute ere the time of her awakening, her untimely lay the noble Paris and true Romeo dead. She wakes, and I entreat her, come forth and bear this work of heaven with patience. But then a noise did scare me from the tomb, and she, too desperate, would not go with me. But as it seems, did violence on herself. All this I know, and to the marriage her nurse is privy. Wow snitch so he's like her nurse knows what's going on too and if odd in this miscarried by my fault let my old life be sacrificed some hour before this time unto the rigor of severest law so friar lawrence tells the whole story totally true you know beginning to end he doesn't know what happened between romeo and paris but he pretty much knows everything else and he says i get it you know like do what you need to do through heaviest law he's like i understand you know that you know, if you think it's my fault, you know, do what you need to do. And it's like, I kind of guess. But anyway, so the prince says, we still have known thee for a holy man. Where's Romeo's man? What can he say to this? So here's Balthazar. And this will eventually kind of tie the strings together because we're a little confused about how Romeo got here. So Balthazar will explain. Balthazar says, I brought my master news of Juliet's death, and then in post he came from Mantua to this same place, to this same monument. This letter he early bid me give his father and threatened me with death going in the vault if I departed not and left him there. I forgot that Romeo gave his dad basically a suicide letter, or he gave Balthazar to give to his dad. I forgot about that. The prince says, give me the letter. I will take a look. Um, he takes Romeo's letter. It says, where is the county's page that raised the watch? So here's the county's page kind of explaining why Paris was there. He says, he came with flowers to strew his lady's grave and bid me stood aloof and so i did anon comes one with light to ope the tomb and by and by my master drew on him and then i ran away to call the watch so he's like they was fighting and i ran away to call the police so you know all three of them have a different story but they all kind of intertwine to explain like what has happened tonight so all three of them are essential to um tightening up the plot of the story so the prince um is going to speak again on 241 right here oops sorry right here in the middle he says, this letter doth make good the friar's words, their courses of love and the tidings of her death. So Romeo in his letter talked about like basically everything that was going on. And he was like, hey, like here's the truth, you know, of what's happening. So um, the prince is like, yeah, okay, the friar wasn't lying. Romeo pretty much wrote the same thing in his letter. And here he writes that he did buy a poison of a poor apothecary and therewithal came to this vault to die and lie with Juliet. Where be these enemies? Capulet, Montague, see what a scourge is laid upon your hate. That heaven finds means to kill your joys with love. And I, for winking at your discords too, have lost a brace of kinsmen. All are punished. So the prince, um, he's not like really upset with Romeo or Juliet. I mean, they're kids. He's really upset with Capulet and Montague. He says, see what a scourge is laid upon your hate. And he's like, look at what your rivalry has done. You've not only killed your joys. He's like, you have not only killed your children, but you have killed lots of my friends as well. Like you have killed, you've gotten people killed. That's his opinion, but I, I get it. So he says like, this is your fault. Like your rivalry has brought people to death. 
Um, Capulet says, oh, brother Montague, give me thy hand. This is my daughter's jointure, which is like a dowry. If you guys aren't familiar with a dowry, like back in the old days when girls would get married, the father of the bride would give like money to the groom and his family because the bride would go live with them. So he like gave them money um, as well when, you know, his daughter got married. Anyway, he says, for no more can I demand. So he actually gives the Montagues a dowry, you know, I guess probably as a peace offering, but Montague says, but I can give thee more for I will ray her statue in pure gold that whilst Verona be that name is known, there shall no figure at such rate be set as that of true and faithful Juliet. So Montague says, I will raise a statue in her honor. Capulet says, as rich shall Romeo's by his lady's lie poor sacrifices of our enmity um the prince is the last person to speak on page 243 he ends the play so definitely want to look at what he says a glooming peace this morning with it brings the sun for sorrow will not show his head go hence to have more talk of these sad things some shall be pardoned and some punished for never was a story of more woe than this of juliet and her super famous last lines um he opens it up and says a glooming place this morning with it brings and the sun for sorrow will not show its head so he says that it's a gloomy morning you can't see the sun the sun is just rising i believe it's wednesday i can't remember if it's been three days or four but he says that the sun is not shining because it is a sad day and the sun is hidden in gloom and clouds he says go hence to have more talk of these sad things he says you guys can go mourn you know like go do what you need to do he says some shall be pardoned and some punished so it does actually leave off with no one being punished he hasn't decided yet which is kind of what you guys are doing with your argument essay is that the prince hasn't made the decision so you have to make a decision for him um for never was a story of more woe than this of Juliet and her Romeo. So, you know, they he he believes, you know, it's a big story of woe of Juliet and Romeo. But we're done. Sorry, this I know this video is really long. You guys can always, don't have to watch the whole thing all at once. But, um, okay, well, the play is finished. Um, you know, your next job is that you guys are going to be writing your argument essay and you have to figure out who is to blame for the tragedy of Romeo and Juliet. So kind of like that third scene where everything goes down, you know, who is to blame for everything kind of ending up like that? You know, who's the one person that you think if they were just like removed, you know, that you think everything may have turned out okay. So it's kind of your job. Um, it's totally your opinion. I mean, it's an argument. It's not like there's a right or wrong. It's all hypothetical. So as long as you guys can use evidence from the book, you'll be totally fine. Um, but if you need help with it, just let me know. Um, I'd be happy to look over them if you want to send them to me. But you probably don't need to work on the essay until you don't have to do it over spring break. You can maybe start like the week after. I don't really think it'll take that long. If you guys don't have any new work next week, it's just a DOL, which I gave you. And then you'll just be working on your essay. So as long as you can do that, you should be fine. But um, I guess that's it for now. Hi, baby. <laughs> but I guess that's all for now. I'm going to go. Um, like I said, leave comments if you have questions or you can text me. See you later.